Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Lead. Lead means guide others into certain direction. And that direction is the vision. And it comes like there have been, say for example, you know, like uh, there are times my objective had been different. Like for example, uh, Srila Prabhupada gave me the instruction to translate his books into Bengali. So that was one objective that I had to achieve. But in this one, I didn't have to become a leader. I just did what the Prabhupada asked me to do. Here I was not a leader, I was a follower. Srila Prabhupada wanted us to do this, therefore I did this. And But then eventually I came into leadership position, I became a GBC. I was a sannyasi. As a sannyasi, I was to preach, I was to travel and preach. At that time, uh, that was my leadership role. I was giving classes, but there was nothing to achieve as such because I was not, I did not actually assume the role of a leader at that time. I was just a follower. I was following Srila Prabhupada's example. I was following Srila Prabhupada's expectation. And I was going, giving classes, traveling and motivating people to, to become nicely engaged in this con. But then I became a GBC. And when I became a GBC, then actually I assumed the role of a leader because something was expected out of me to accomplish for Islam. And one of the first responsibility I had was my involvement in France. Actually, I became a GBC when many leaders of ISKCON left ISKCON. They had spiritual difficulties and it happened within a short span of two, three years time. Like four or five leaders of ISKCON actually left the movement. And they were all very powerful individuals. They were the GBCs and they were gurus. And it caused such a massive damage to our institution. And like the institution actually fell apart at that time, always falling apart at that time. And at that time, we got the responsibility to get those broken pieces together. And so that's what we were doing. Like, for example, I got involved in France and France was completely devastated. It was in such a bad shape that nobody actually wanted to do anything with France. And at that time, the French devotees, I just became a GBC that year. The French devotees came and appealed to me, please help us. And I just could not say no. Although I was not a GBC of France at that time, I became a GBC of Belgium and Holland, which was neighboring to France. But I went to France, I met with the devotees and they were, they lost everything practically. The only thing that remained was the new Mayapur, the farm that Srila Prabhupada bought with his own money. But that farm was mortgaged to get a loan from a bank to buy another property in Paris, which was uh, very prestigious and uh, it was a Chateau. Chateau means like a, like a big villa, big palace. And I won't say big palace, I'll say big villa and a kind of a small palace. And <clears throat> so they lost that place, which was called Ermenonville in Paris. And the only thing that was left was New Mayapur. And I had to take the responsibility to save New Mayapur. Now to save New Mayapur, I needed $2 million because $1 million was taken from the bank as a loan. And the 
another million actually accrued as interest and over a period, long period of time. So that was the big responsibility. So anyway, I got involved. I simply thought that let me give it a try. If I succeed well and good, if I don't, then what can be done? And mind you, at that time, I was I was just a newly appointed GBC. I didn't have any zone. I didn't have devotees. I didn't really have resources. And that's the year also I started to give initiation. So I didn't also have disciples, you know, who could support me. And anyway, I embarked on this project. And some other devotees also came forward to help me. And we succeeded. We could get the bank, we could buy the property back from the bank. So, in this way, I could see that in Krishna consciousness, when you sincerely try to do something, Krishna helps. So, dependence upon Krishna is the key to our success in that respect. And time and time again, I have seen that. Like, you know, I've been, been involved in various projects. Like, uh, another project was to make a uh, TV, television series on the life of Srila Prabhupada. And I felt the need, I embarked into that project, which also costed a lot of money. And those days, I also didn't really have that kind of resources. But that project had been successful. At least it has been completed although it took years, but yes, it happened. Then I got involved in Ujjain. Uh, it's a place in this, in India where there was nothing. Nobody ever thought of having a center there, although it has some spiritual significance. Like this is the place where Krishna and Balaram went to study in the ashram of Sandipani Muni. This is a place where uh, Krishna's, one of the principal wives, Mitra came from. She was the princess of that place. Anyway, so this is how, you know, like, although I, it has certain spiritual significance, our, uh, but I never thought of getting involved. And as a matter of fact, I never thought of even building a temple. I never, because I used to think that, um, so many temples are there, so many temples are actually suffering due to lack of manpower and money. So it's rather important that we give them a help than build a new temple. But somehow or other I got drawn into that project and I embarked on the project and something nice came up. <laughs> a temple was built. I had a challenge. Like the gov I, I actually went to Ujjain on the invitation of the Madhya Pradesh government. The Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh invited me to do something there. So on their invitation I went there and we started the project. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, and when we went there, the government actually gave us a facility, a property that we could use for one year. And that means that within one year's time, we had to set up our establishment there. So, uh, I felt, although I never built anything before, I never even, I didn't even build a shack <laughs> before, but um, like I thought, well, we have to build a temple within one year. And so, I remember that when the, there was a press conference when they announced that we didn't, because we went there and people got to know us and the press became interested when they heard that I was going to build a temple in Ujjain. So the press reporters asked me whether it would be possible to build a temple within one year. And my response was, that my spiritual master built 108 temples in 10 years. So what's the big deal if I make one temple in one year's time? And 
anyway by krishna's mercy that goal also was achieved like temple was built within 10 within 9 months and 20 days within less than 10 months and it was a full fledged hand carved marble how it happened well here i would say that yes i got the vision i got an objective i got a target and i yes i motivated it i couldn't do it myself like i motivated devotees i motivated uh, construction engineers the uh, the marble uh, dealers marble carvers then the contractor and by krishna's mercy i got a good, very good team and the result was that it ha- it happened like with less than 10 months time a full fledged marble temple came up and as i was saying like facilitating these people this was my team i was motivating them but they needed facilitation that means the contractors and the marble people and all those people they needed money otherwise they wouldn't do it and yes by krishna's mercy it happened i could facilitate them like if i could not pay them then they wouldn't have done that it's not that of course these people need money but within our institution devotees need inspiration devotees need and we and need to be enthused inspired and facilitated and taken care of 